Hi, I'm Seth McFarland from Family Guy, and I have the privilege of being up here at the magical, magical kingdom of George Lucas, talking to the man himself. Thank you so much. Well, it's great to be here. This was an absolute joy for everyone involved to be able to do this. Everyone on staff knows just about everything you've done, almost verbatim. <laughs> Your company was supportive from the start. Why are you guys so much nicer than everyone else? Why did you allow us to do this? Well, I think ultimately we don't have to be mean. You know, we're not really that competitive. I came out of film school uh, with a lot of friends. We all helped each other. We helped each other in our careers. Uh, and we just never were competitive about anything. We were always competitive in a friendly way to say, you know, like playing cards or, uh, you know, dunking baskets to say, okay, you're so smart, try this, you know. <laughs> And so it's that kind of competition, not the, uh, you know, you must be destroyed and, and uh, you must fail so I can win and all that sort of thing. How often do you watch your own movies? How often do you, are you ever at home and you sit down and you say, let's, let's just pop it in and see if there's anything I It doesn't really, I mean, usually it's flipping channels and it's on some, you know, cable. Will you stop and watch cable it? Movie. Sometimes I will, yeah. you know, depends on what I'm doing. Other than that, I'm sort of, I have to see them you know, every five years or so for one reason or another, you know, some screening that somebody's having that I'm sort of... Right. But to be very honest with you, I love all the movies I've made. I love watching them. I've never grown tired of them. And thank goodness for that because um, we call that the, the true curse of filmmaking, <laughs> which is if you make movies, you're going to have to, whatever movie you make, you're going to have to watch it about a hundred times. Yeah. And that sometimes that's the worst punishment of all. <laughs> Yeah, if, if there's ever a rerun of Family Guy on the air, I have to stop and watch it. Well, our TiVo is completely filled up with Family Guy. Oh, good. We've got everything, I think every episode, TiVo. We don't pay, you know, we don't buy those you DVDs. Don't, and you don't, we actually oh. TiVo it and just, you know, run it every <laughs> night. <laughs> George Lucas has a TiVo full of Family Guy. <laughs> Although he's never bought a DVD. All right. <laughs> well, I bought, I bought all the Star Wars DVDs. but Good, well, you can go out and buy them again. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Would you say you know all the Star Wars movies pretty much verbatim like the fans? Not really. If I like hummed a piece of music, would you be able to tell me what Where part in of the movie? Where yeah. the film? Yeah. That would be tough. Really? Yeah, but you can try. Uh, okay, okay. I recognize it, but I don't know what it goes. <laughs> that's, that's Cloud City. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're right. Very good. Okay, how about this? How about this? Run. That's the uh, the uh, big throne room at the end where they get their medals. No. All right. You know what? That's, what is it? This is, that's the uh, beginning of the snow battle in uh, in uh, Empire Strikes oh, Back. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I think that you know was what? performance. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I had anything to do with the music. God, I can't. I, I, I haven't I can't heard it played that way before. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just from the throat. Well, that, that's good because that tells me that you have other interests that you. Yes, I. I what What do you do? What I is, move on to other things. Yeah. Well, now I'm doing the uh, Clone Wars animated TV series. I've always wanted. I love television. I've had a great time in television, and um, I love animation. I've been doing animation for years, and uh, it's combining those two things into something, and then being able to tell the story of the Clone Wars, which is sort of the missing link and features of what actually happened during the Clone yeah. Wars and explore new characters and have more fun and do it in the style of sort of episode four without the uber reality of the drama of the Skywalker family. I know when people ask me what I do when I'm not working because I'm sure you, you work much more than I do but even so it's I feel like it's seven days a week and I have no answer. What do you do to have fun? What, what, what do you do in your downtime? Basically I have three kids. <laughs> That's basically whatever downtime I have. Yeah. And um, I've raised them by myself. The youngest one is now 14. The oldest one's 26. So I've been doing it for a long time. Mm. And uh, I actually, you know, stopped directing when my daughter was born. And um, it was basically retired for 15 years to raise my kids. In the end, whatever free time I have, that's what I do. I go to the movies. I love cars. For a lot of us, Star Wars is sort of the definitive movie of our childhood and, and of our adulthood. If we're asked, you know, what's the greatest movie of all time, most of us will knee-jerk, uh, Star Wars. What is, was there a movie when you were a kid that you found to be that 
to, to hold that sort of place? Um, well, to be very honest with you, I didn't go to the movies that much when I was younger. You know, I lived in a very small town, one movie theater. You mostly went, you know, to chase girls or go on a date or something. <laughs> so you didn't pay much attention to the movies. Uh, but um, the movies I remember are, you know, Bridge on the River Kwai, um, Doctor Strangelove. Those are two of them that stick out in my hard day's night. I remember reading a quote from you at one point that when, when you were asked why you chose to make this movie, you said, I, I've always wanted to see a movie like this, and no one's ever made it. And I figured if somebody did, then everyone, and did it well, everyone would try to copy it, and then I could sit back and relax and watch the copies. That's basically what uh, I do in those situations. I, it's not really about the copy part, but mostly it's that I come up with an idea for a movie and I just want to see it. And in the worst possible situations, I've had to make it myself. <laughs> in the best of all possible situations, I've gotten Steven Spielberg to make it. So, um, but ultimately, it's to enjoy the movie. And I think for all of my friends who are successful, all the same age, all went to school together, all had fun, the secret ingredient, which everybody's like, why are you guys so successful? We all love movies. We aren't doing it to get rich. We never thought we were ever going to get rich or be successful or anybody would even like it. But we love movies, and we make the kind of movies that we love to see. Say, oh, I'd like to see that. And we have the advantage of being able to actually make the movie. You know, and say, okay, well, it's not coming out, so let's just make it. And then we'll <laughs> bring it out. And so that's really the fun of it and uh, uh, mostly why... I do it, and I, you know, a lot of things I do, I just soon give the idea to somebody else and let them do it, just do it myself. When I was in college, I heard a story that you guys submitted the cut of Star Wars without any music, and they said, no, 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 we don't like this. We want you to recut it. You went back, did nothing except score it, bring it back to the studio, and they said, this is great, this is exactly what, what we want. Is, that, is there any truth to that? That's complete bullshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Absolutely no truth All whatsoever. Right. I'm going to call uh, my college they, roommate they, who claims to be your it, biggest fan. The studio saw it with temp tracks. Yeah. And, you know, they know, you know, and they knew we were using Johnny Williams. Yeah. And so they kind of knew that it would, but it definitely jumped it about four times better than it was when we had temp music in there. Did how, how did you get hooked up with John Williams? Was that? Uh, uh, I got hooked up with Johnny through Steve Spielberg, who had used him on Jaws. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm looking for somebody who could do a really traditional, old fashioned, Corn Gold score, you know, the, yeah. the old guy, Seahawk. Yeah. And um, so he said, I know the one guy that can do it. He just did Jaws. He's perfect. And he said, Johnny Williams. And I said, isn't he a jazz pianist or something like that? <laughs> he said, yeah, but he's, he, he's really a class. He's been trained as a classical composer, and he really knows it really well, and, you know, he'll be great for you. So that's how I got to him. And once you team up with Johnny, you don't ever want to leave. Yeah, because you know, the yeah. music's fantastic. One of the things that, that you can identify, obviously, a, a early, mid-70s film by is that they were very sparse and almost no music at times. Was that something that you set out to kind of restore? Well, I don't know whether I set out to restore it, but I'm a, very much of a music guy. Mm. So all of my movies, everything I've ever done has been centered around music. They're, like, American Graffiti was written around music. I would listen to the songs, and then I would find the right song for the scene that I was thinking of, and then I'd write the scene around the song. Um, and before that, um, when I was doing THX, we were sort of combining sound effects and music to combine a kind of a musical soundtrack that had to do with all of the sounds, including uh, the dialogue being more treated like music and singing than like you know, actual expository dialogue. So I've always been very focused on the music and the soundtrack, and um, I love it. And uh, I just come out of that era of the 60s where music is everything. Now, you mentioned uh, THX 1138. Um, which ends with a man alone in an apocalyptic sunset. And in Star Wars, we have that, of course, very, very memorable scene of Luke staring out at the two suns. Is, that, is there a significance, an artistic significance to that? I guess the easiest way to say it is the sun represents being outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, the sunset or sunrise, depending on how you want to uh, portray it, um, is the essence of change. Those people in the movies who are looking off to the horizon or running off to the horizon into the sunset are taking, are going from a life of inside the box that's very uh, the same every day to the unknown. They're running off to either the black night where all the scary part is or to a whole new dawn of a new day where 
you know, they get a second chance. You obviously run this vast, vast empire here. Um, what, what is your, what is your leadership style? Are you, are you more Darth Vader or Admiral Akbar? Um, well, to be very honest with you, I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I basically make movies. I'm not really one to run businesses. So I turn it over to other people and then I kind of oversee it. Uh, I would say I'm uh, the gentle giant. I don't get pissed off very often. You know, I, I don't do a lot of hands-on stuff. I let everybody else do it. Uh, as opposed to movies where I'm sort of a micromanager. Do you watch a lot of television? Is there anything that you respond to on TV or is it all kind of... The only thing I watch is Family Guy. Oh, God. <laughs> this I mean, is just, I'm so uh, glad I came up here. Yeah. That and uh, a bunch of old jackass episodes. But <laughs> <laughs> If there's one thing that you would like to be remembered for, one project... Um, that you have done or that you have yet to do, what, uh, what would it be? Raising my kids. There you go. That's a human being right there, folks. It's a lot harder than making movies, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Life begins at 40 because, yeah, you yeah. know, you're, you're either dead and you're on to a different life. Yeah. Or you're so burned out you can't think about what you've been doing and you sort of wander into it a whole other vocation. You're going to be a traffic guard at you know, some school or something. <laughs> but you managed to stick it out. You, you, you managed to avoid that. Well, I just, I say I built an edifice and then I just stand aside and I can fall asleep for weeks or months <laughs> or years and nobody notices. Oh boy, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> George, thank you so much. All right. This was great. Well, good luck. All right.